Hello Newtonians! In this video we are going to learn about engineering documentation. We are going to look at why engineering documentation is important, we will see what the term technical product documentation means, and then we are going to look into different types of documents you could encounter as a mechanical design engineer. Developing the product can be a long, complex, and exhausting process. There is more to the product development than meets the eye. In order to make sure that the mechanical design engineer, or any engineer for that matter, covers all the areas of the product design, different documents need to be created. We need to create part drawing for the manufacturing of single components, we need assembly drawings to fit different components together, calculate critical components of the product, test them, and ensure that the quality is satisfactory. Doing all these things without a plan and a clear understanding of what needs to be done is bad engineering praxis. The product development process involves groups of different teams working together to bring the right product to the customers. At the center of any product development are customers. There are many different requirements that customers expect from the product they are buying. Still, in general, the bare minimum is that the product fulfills the intended purpose, solving the customer's problem, and that using the device is safe for the customer, using the product will not harm the customer. Let us say that the customer wants to buy a desk lamp. The primary function of the desk lamp is to convert one type of energy to illumination. Let us assume that our customer does not want to have any flammable liquid in their house and would want to use electric energy to produce illumination. Basically, what our customer, at a bare minimum, is expecting is that when they plug the desk lamp into the electrical outlet that it will lighten up the room and that in the process of doing so, it will not electrocute them, kill them, or burn down their house. I as a customer appreciate when my desk lamp is not trying to kill me. Now imagine that the customer wants to have a light switch so they don't have to plug and unplug the cable whenever they need the light. On average, let's say that customers will press the switch 10 times a day. They are expecting to use the desk lamp for at least 2 years. So, you must make sure that your switch, on average, can be actuated 7,000 times without failure. Moving forward, your customers could have color preferences, shape preferences, additional functions like adjustable height, etc. The list of requirements could go in infinity. In order to develop and introduce a sellable product, all of the main requirements should be met and adequately addressed. Without proper systems and document management, this is hard to do. For mechanical design engineers, this means that the proper line of communication should be in place. Technology has progressed to a level that was just 20 years ago unimaginable. The products have become more complex and robust, the design is more demanding and complicated pushing the limits of manufacturing technologies, communication only with the engineering drawings is no longer enough. Mechanical engineering covers a wide area of different fields with various diverse technologies. For engineers to communicate complex sets of information acceptably and understandably, ISO has defined all the relevant documents for the specification of products, equipment, and plants. It is called technical product documentation. The technical product documentation types are defined with ISO 2984-5-2011. According to ISO 2984-5-2011, a document is a fixed and structured amount of information that can be managed and interchanged as a unit between users and systems, and documentation is a collection of the documents related to a given subject. While ISO 2984-5-2011 lists the whole range of technical product documents, we will list the most interesting for design engineers. Let's now look into different types of engineering documents. The part drawing is defined as the drawing depicting a single part that cannot be further disassembled and includes all the necessary information required for the definition of the part. In the part drawing, everything required to manufacture the single part is defined, example, the form, dimensions, tolerances, material, finishes, treatments, etc. The assembly drawing is defined as a drawing representing the relative position and or shape of a group of assembled parts. The assembly drawing is not showing the manufacturing details of a single part but merely how the individual parts are supposed to be assembled. The main assembly consists of sub-assemblies, parts, and materials. On the assembly drawing, we can include the part list or it can be provided in a separate document. The parts list defines the list of the object's elements. The parts list is added directly to the drawing, or it can be provided with the assembly drawing as a separate list. The parts list shows only the top-level parts used to build the assembly. In addition, the parts list can be automatically extracted from the company's ERP or PDM system. With the part list, only one structural level is defined. The BOM is a list of the sub-assemblies, 
parts, and materials required for building the assembly. The BOM can be added directly to the drawing or provided with the assembly drawing as a separate list. The BOM show all levels of components required to build the assembly. In addition, the BOM can be automatically extracted from the company's ERP or PDM system. The difference between the parts list and BOM is that the parts list defines only one structural level. The tabular drawing is defined as the drawing listing differing variations of a specific configuration using a single, common illustration. The shape of the component is always the same, but the relationship between different features is changing. In the table on the drawing, you can see that we have different values of the A, B, C, D, E, and T for the different configurations of the component. We could create a different drawing for each plate, but that is unnecessary additional work. The fabrication drawing is defined as the part drawing of an assembly of fully specified items permanently joined together. The components could be joined together by welding, soldering, or adhesive. Every component of the fabrication drawing should be fully specified. Also, the relationship between those components should be defined. The outline drawing gives the outside peripheral envelope, overall dimensions, and mass of an object. The supplier drawing defines a part developed and owned by an external supplier. Usually, the supplier drawings can be found on the supplier website, or you could contact the supplier to provide you with it. The illustration drawing shows figures and sketches for any general purpose not covered by the more specific document types. These could include figures for marketing purposes, figures for the instruction manuals or work instructions, etc. The document list is defined as a formally built-up inventory in which all relevant documents for a specific purpose are listed. This document can belong to a system, part, project, etc. The best practice is always to display the document identification number and revision of a document list and all documents listed in it. Other information depends on the company's preferences. The calculation sheet is defined as the document providing the results of calculations regarding essential product characteristics. This can include hand calculations, calculations according to the standard, FEA, CFD, etc. In addition to previously mentioned documents, we can also encounter Requirement Specification The requirement specification is defined as the document compiled and evaluated with the requirements from the markets, customer, authorities, and the company itself. These requirements are usually stated in the form of wishes, and they are usually not measurable. For example, the product must be robust, strong, and waterproof. This type of document describes what needs to be built and not how. Technical Specification The technical specification is defined as the document specifying the requirements for one specific part or a group of parts with similar characteristics. The technical specifications are quantitative, and they can be verified. For example, Requirement Specification The product must be light. Technical specification, the product's mass should be less than 3 kilograms, M less than 3 kilograms. Part definition document. The part definition is defined as the text-based document that may be supplied with a drawing of the defined part, specifying property requirements for the part described by the document. This document is very useful if you have a procurement department. Defining the required technical data of the component supplied by an external supplier can be used for the procurement team to find a less expensive supplier without involving a design engineer or procuring the wrong component. Assembly Instruction The Assembly Instructions document is defined as a document providing information of how and in what sequence the different parts shall be assembled to receive a specific end product. Usually, for simple assemblies, the assembly drawing is used. The assembly instructions are created when the assembly process is complex, different tools and procedures are used. In that case, the assembly drawing shows the final assembly and the part list, and it is refereeing to the assembly instructions. The assembly instructions define the assembly process in great detail, with every step clearly and unambiguously explained. Test Plan The test plan is defined as a document describing the scope, realization, resources, and plans for the intended test activities. Test Specification The test specification document is defined as a specification explaining how to perform the test activities according to the test plan. Test Report The test report is defined as documentation of test results based on the tests carried out at a new part, assembly, product, or system. As you can see there is more to product development than meets the eye. 
the mechanical design engineer is not responsible only for the design, but depending on the size and the structure of the company, the mechanical design engineer could be responsible for a whole range of different activities during the development phase. Creating CAD models and drawings in CAD software is the easy part. Knowing what to design and why is the hard part. Documenting everything is not because someone wants to give you more things to do. These documents ensure that all customer requests are defined, specified, understood, and translated to the physical product with satisfactory quality for the customer. Great quality products should have the same quality independently of the produced quantity. We want our first, tenth, and millionth customers to have the same experience with our product. Everything that you do is for your customer to be happy with the product and that they did not spend their valuable time and hard-earned money on a bad product. Do you like our videos? Then, give us a thumb up, comment, and share it with your friends, colleagues, and on your social media channels. And if you want to become a part of the Newtonians, make sure to subscribe to our channel.